Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Katie and today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 books of the year so far in 2021. Um, so that is like top 10 from January to June. I'm sure you all know what the first half of the month year is. Uh, anyway, okay, so yeah, so these are the books which are my favourites and there was a few like runner-ups I guess that I could include like Chain of Iron but I didn't want to include that because it's just like a series continuation and well there is a couple of series continuations in here but I feel like that book's like popular enough so anyway yeah and I limited myself to like one book per series because a few of them like I really enjoyed the whole series that I've read but I only wanted to include one so anyway um yeah so let's just get started so the first book on the list is Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb and this is the first book in the Tony Man trilogy um which is the third trilogy in the realm of the elderlings and the second trilogy following Fitz um and I love this one so I'm sure it's a well-known fact by now that I haven't read Royal Assassin or Assassin's Quest but <laughs> having said that, I still really, really loved Fool's Errand. And I feel like in a way, it, I enjoyed it more because I hadn't read them. So, because there's a lot of sort of recapping and reflecting on the first series that happens in Fool's Errand. And because I hadn't read them, it wasn't boring to me. Like it was more, I was finding out about these things. So it was just like a character reflecting on their life and you're learning about that with the character, which I thought was really cool. Um, and I love Fitz as a character. He's very sort of, yeah, in this book, very reflective. And you can sort of <laughs> see him like spiralling into depression um, and sort of almost grief for his old life. Um, and the Fool is an amazing character. I love the Fool. Um, yeah. And also I like the new characters that we sort of meet in this book. Oh, and Night Eyes as well. Can't believe I forgot Night Eyes. But I love Fitz and Night Eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so yeah, the new characters that we meet in this one, like, well, I guess sort of like Prince Dutiful, um, and Hap, and oh, oh, the rest of Fitz's various children. <laughs> no, that's that's not a spoiler, by the way. I just feel like Fitz sort of ends up with like loads more children than he actually has. <laughs> I don't know, and it's just really interesting the magic and the kind of conflicts of the magic. Um, and I think I thought it was sort of a new conflict, but I think it actually it's stuff that's bubbled over from the first trilogy. Um, but yeah, I just love the way the magic sort of ties into the conflict and the conflict ties into the characters in the struggles. And I just think it's all masterfully done. And Robin Hood just toys with your emotions like no other author. And the ending of Fool's Errand, there's some lines which just hit you so hard um yeah I think I thought we like had just had my heart ripped out by the ending of Fool's Errand it's just oh um it's very emotional it made me cry a little bit which not many books do um and yeah I just think it's a really excellent start to her new trilogy and I enjoyed the whole trilogy actually but I think Fool's Errand is my favourite of the trilogy just because I really like the story in that one and the, oh, there's loads of cats as well which I really like and the fits in the full dynamic <laughs> I love it um okay so that's that one so then after that we have For the Wolf by Hannah Witten so this one I really enjoyed it I think I gave it 4.5 stars rather than 5 but I still really liked it and it is a book I think about quite a bit um and so this one is just impeccable like forest creepy vibes which I loved and the romance is so sweet um but it reminds me a bit of Warbreaker so because the love interest has a lot of Sosebron in him <laughs> and is a bit of a cinema role um so basically we're following these two sisters so Neve and Red and Red has been brought up her whole life I think she's like the second daughter so she's like for the wolf so she knows she's gonna get sent into the forest when she's a certain age there's like a sacrifice to the kind of wolf this wolf figure um and so yeah she goes into the forest and finds this wolf but the wolf isn't maybe all that he's legend makes him out to be um and then they're like in the forest and like they're trying to like save the forest which i love that story um, and then Neve also, she's kind of been brought up as being for the throne. So then she's trying to 
like navigate the politics because we're also following her as well which I really liked and seeing both sisters storylines and also seeing like the two sisters and seeing them trying to like get back to each other but the ways they go about it is very interesting <laughs> yeah so I just really like the politics I really like the foresty vibes I always love like plant magic and stuff um, and the characters are really great especially Iman who's the wolf um he's the wolf yeah I love my cinema roles so yeah I really enjoyed this um and the writing is very sort of beautiful as well so would highly recommend okay then next we have Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert and I love the Brown Sisters books and honestly Eve Brown might be my favourite I think so I think Eve Brown is definitely my favourite romance but Danny Brown might be my favourite like character but I loved I love them all to be honest but yeah Eve Brown just oh so good I love Eve and her like kind of slightly chaotic like away with the fairies type vibes um and I just love the whole storyline this book it was so funny um and even Jacob's dynamic is hilarious um and I just love the like slightly crazy feral one with the like really grumpy stoic one um and just seeing them come together and like finding like their person I just loved all those themes and the setting in the Lake District I thought was really cool and I love the like B&B &B setting I love things that are like set in a hotel or a tavern or a and b I just think that's so cool so I really like that and just Eve like learning how to how to be a grown-up I guess and just taking responsibility for stuff and like oh I just loved it um and the, yeah just the dynamic was so good and I love the romance and oh yeah I just I'm a bit of a sucker for a good romance and if you like Tully Hibbert's romances so just mwah. I just love them the characters are always so good and oh and and I laughed out loud so many times while I was reading Eve Brown there's some really funny scenes I still have a, a picture on my phone of a paragraph which, which is like if something like Jacob had never envisaged himself holding a glittery purple dildo or something <laughs> I really hope no one scrolls through my camera roll but anyway um yeah it's just a really great book and I love the whole messages about like finding a person and just that person you can be yourself around and just the whole like two kind of weird is finding each other that just made me think of that line from that it's kind of a meme now but from Riverdale which is like in case you haven't noticed I'm a weirdo I, I don't even know the whole line but um I've just seen it in like memes <laughs> um and I, I don't know if it's something to do with a beanie <laughs> but anyway um yeah so I really like that one Okay, then next we have A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie. So this is the first book in the Age of Madness series. And this is in the First Law world. And it takes place about 30 years after the events of the First Law trilogy. And we're sort of following the next like generation down. So quite a few of the main characters in this one are children of the characters from the original First Law series. Um, which I really love. But the characters in this one are my absolute favourites ever. I love them so much. I miss them all. I read these books like last week and I already missed them. Um, so yeah, so we have Sabine who is like this kind of... Um, what is it? Mecha no, not mechanical. She's like a business mastermind. Um, and she's like has a lot of stakes and shares in like industry so in the world the kind of industrial revolution is almost happening um and yeah Sabine's very like power hungry but she's so good oh she's a, one of the best female characters ever and any favorite for sure um and yeah so we have her and then we also have also who is the prince and he's another great character actually like he grew on me so much especially in the trouble with peace and i love him now um but i mean i loved him from the start but he's such a funny character and just his whole like dynamic i just think he's so good like he's like he sort of he knows he's like bad but he's actually secretly quite good at things but he just has this outward like i i don't know how to explain it but yeah he's a really good character and he's like that kind of charming like flirty slightly layabout prince but just seeing him grow throughout the books and like becoming almost a good ruler I don't know I love it um and then um but he's also very like self depreciate self depreciating is that the word um yeah and then we have Leo who is the most <laughs> he was an absolute disaster himbo he's so funny um 
yeah, he just like charges straight into danger and doesn't have a single thought in his head. Um, but I love him, I'm very attached to him. And then Ricky or Ricker, I think it's pronounced Ricker, um, and she is uh, the dogman's daughter from the first series, but she is um she's great I, I don't know how to describe it really without talking about her plot but um yeah so she has this thing called the long eye which means you can like see into the future and she's very much like a feral like badass type character but she's really good and i think she's much much better executed than pharaoh who is the character in the first door series but but she sort of reads very like i don't know but ricky is almost a similar character type but done so much better i think but yeah, anyway, I love Ricky as well. Um, and then who else? Oh yeah, Vic, who's like this scary spy lady who I love. Um, yeah, and there's various other characters as well. Um, Finry, who is an absolute milf. I love her. Um, yeah, and the Queen Terrors, I think she's called. She's a milf as well. I love her, but you get more of her in the Troubled piece. But anyway, um, yeah, so I love the main characters. I really love the plot, so it's kind of there's i think the plot as well is much stronger in these than it is in the first law because that was another thing i struggled with in first law a bit is the plot it's very it just feels kind of directionless i feel like but this one it's definitely um things are happening and you can see like and things are like building and it almost feels like the first law was a prequel to this series um and it, it's like yeah it's kind of that sort of the workers like rising up and wanting their rights and the kind of fast paced of progress in the world has sort of led to various bad things like poor conditions for workers and poor um yeah just the kind of nobility being very power hungry and i just think it's a very like realistic depiction of kind of that time of like revolution almost um yeah i just think it's really good so would highly recommend this and I, I feel like you could read this without having read um the first law but i feel like you would get more out of it if you've read first law i haven't read the standalones um but the way i feel like there were some easter eggs to the standalones but yeah i would probably recommend reading first law before this just because there's some things <laughs> the, but there's one thing which caught me completely off guard because i would completely forgotten this about the last argument of kings and then it hit me over the head and i was like oh no what have i done um but yeah so anyway if you read last argument of kings keep something in mind before you start shipping characters um okay next we have song for the wild built by becky chambers so this is just a short novella and obviously i love becky chambers she's one of my favorite authors i have my little shrine to her up here um and yeah so i just really love this one we're following uh monk decks and they are at the start of the book they're like this garden monk <laughs> but they describe they decide that they're not really fulfilled in their career anymore so they decide to become a tea monk and that's someone who like travels around the kind of country um and they will make a special like blend of tea for people and just listen to their problems so people come and like have a cup of tea and like have a talk or they just have a sit and chill with their like special blend of tea which i really love that whole concept of like the tea and and i feel like tea can be very healing there's like nothing that can't be sold with a good cup of tea well there is quite a lot but <laughs> it, like you get the gist and it's, i just think it's really good and it's such a kind of healing novella and it just feels like truly a break from a busy world and that's sort of what the story is about but also when you're reading it you feel like you're having a break from the busy world so and i just feel like it's done so well and becky chambers just has the best like cozy vibes um, and I love all the like plants it's very like botanical world and I think it's described as like solar punk uh, like steampunk but in a more eco-friendly way <laughs> I guess and I, yeah so I just really love that and I really love the themes and the like kind of how it's all right to not know what you want to do with the future it's just searching for something that maybe is never quite there and then at the same time we also have this other story so in the world it's like the robots all kind of gained sentience like hundreds of years ago but then they decided that they weren't going to overthrow the humans they were just going to go off and go into the wilds and like live in their own communities and um 
basically monk decks as they are on their adventures they come into contact with the robot for like the first time in hundreds of years so it's like this monk and the robot are trying to like learn about each other's kind of cultures and the robot moss cat that we meet is so cute i love moss cat as well and he's just trying to learn like what humans need but like humans don't always know what they need and oh it's just so good Warm hug of a book and it's so short as well like you could just read it while you're having your tea um yeah it's just fantastic um it's very healing yeah i don't know so would highly recommend house of always by jen neons and this is the fourth book in the chorus of dragons series <laughs> forgot the title then um and yeah i really enjoyed this one it um it's not my absolute favorite in the series i think my favorite is memory of souls and this one i think is my second favorite and we i loved exploring more about all the other different characters so this one we're kind of following like 12 main characters i would say which sounds like quite a lot but for the series it isn't it doesn't feel like loads but um because they are kind of in little groups um but i love getting to know more about some of the other characters because like, i love kieran janelle and terry who are the three main characters but um i liked getting to explore some more of the other character dynamics um as well um and yeah i just really like the kind of direction the story is sort of going and i'm very and i feel like this book it was a little bit of setup probably for the final book but i feel like it set it up quite well so i'm very excited to see what happens and yeah i think the main reason i love this series is the characters like i just love them all and there's just so many great characters and they're all such chaotic like vibes and just oh yeah so i really like the series I don't really want to talk about the plot because I feel like it doesn't make that much sense unless because it's like the fourth book in a series <laughs> but I would really recommend the series Um, the first one we're sort of following Kieran as he's growing up and we're following like two timelines so one is him sort of finding out he is like the lost guy on of this noble house and then another one is he's being sold to like this black brotherhood who is like an assassin now what's the word they're like assassins so anyway and he goes to live with like the black brotherhood on this magical island thing and um, so yeah they're following the two timelines and it's just very chaotic it's very convoluted and um, very convoluted like family politics i think these books definitely are not for everyone <laughs> like they are a bit crazy at times um and yeah but anyway i really enjoyed this one so it's on my list of top 10 so far and next we have pale light in the black by kb wagner and this one really surprised me with how much i love it so it's a sci-fi and it is it's very much again similar to becky chambers very like cozy vibes it's very like um it's a lot of focused on like the characters and their relationships with each other and like the sort of more like healing i, I don't know maybe not healing is the right word like um just being a nice person and like general kindness and like the spirit of humanity i guess um so we're kind of following this crew and i can't remember the name of the spaceship actually um but they um get a new lieutenant called max and max is like from this um important family but she's kind of the black sheep of the family but this so this her family controls this thing called life x which is like this substance that everyone has which kind of extends people's lives and allows them to live in space and um, so anyway so max joins the crew of the spaceship as a lieutenant so it's kind of about her sort of learning to become one of the crew and like see the crew as family and like blending in with the crew i, I don't think i'm getting my words out right <laughs> so it's about her sort of making friends with the crew and like almost becoming one of the family so that's a really nice story um but then also max kind of has all this drama with her family um and at the same time this life x substance is being sort of um counterfeits on the markets and like a deadly counterfeit so it's like killing people almost so that's kind of one storyline and then also they're entering into these like tournament which is like these games it's kind of like the olympics but for space crews <laughs> um so that's just the kind of nice like if you like like tournament style storylines then that's a good storyline and all the other characters are really great as well so like also on the crew we have jenks who she is great she's like this completely feral like uh, i love her um and her brother i think it's nika or nika nika he like leaves at the start of the book because he is like the lieutenant and he goes to another ship to be like commander and then max is his replacement 
but like their Nicka and Jenks, their like sibling relationship is so precious and like I liked how Nicka just didn't vanish from the book like we still see him through like um phone calls and um, it's probably not a phone call because it's like hundreds of years in the future but like video call type things so I like still getting him and yeah just that sibling relationship was really precious and then Rosa who is the captain of the crew and I really like her as well and she has like a little family back on earth with like a wife and her little kids and all oh, it's so cute um yeah and I just really liked all the characters and all the character dynamics um and the story is actually really good as well like I like the tournament thing and the whole thing with the life effects is really interesting and also they're kind of being hunted down because at the start of the book they, they like try and pull off this kind of raid which goes a bit wrong so then they're being like targeted especially Jenks um so yeah I just really like it it's such a good book and just the vibes and the cozy and it just makes you feel so good and just I had a massive grin on my face a lot while reading so yeah would highly recommend okay then we have project hail mary by andy weir so this is another one which i absolutely love so i really like the martian by andy weir but honestly i think project hail mary i liked more so it's definitely more sciencey than the martian i would say um and i feel like i i don't know if i can comment on this because obviously i do have like a bit of science knowledge um but i feel like you might struggle if you haven't done like any science recently um just like, like even i don't have that much like the most hard science i did was probably maths and chemistry a level um like since then it's more like medicine which is kind of slightly different from spacey science but i just feel like you might struggle a little bit especially if you don't comprehend scientific concept easily i feel like he does a good job of sort of it, it I didn't struggle with any of the concepts so but I feel like if you don't have as much science like knowledge you might struggle a little bit more but anyway so I don't know what the point of saying that was maybe it's not quite as accessible as the Martian I think was my point on that <laughs> but anyway um I really loved it the characters are great the main character Rylan I think it's Rylan or Ryland, one of the two anyway and he sort of wakes up on this spaceship well he doesn't even well yeah I think he knows it's a spaceship but he doesn't know like where he is he doesn't know when he is he doesn't really know anything and all he knows is he's on the ship with these like two dead crewmates so the book is kind of him solving this mystery of why he is there and where he is and just what's going on generally and it's just so great I don't want to say too much because I feel like that that kind of then it's good to just find out as the story goes on but it's really good it's a very specific like sci-fi trope that it falls into and it's one of my favorites and oh I just love it um and one of the characters called Rocky is the best character ever I would really highly recommend the audiobook um because I think part of the book works really well through sound um, and I think it just adds a lot to the story but yeah oh and the end had me so emotional this is another one where I, like just a little happy tear and just the kind of whole like full circleness of it was just so great um, and I feel like the stakes are quite a lot higher in this one I mean obviously the stakes <laughs> stakes are pretty high in the Martian for Mark Watney but this one, the stakes like more high for like the entire world or the entire universe type thing. Um, so yeah, so I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so it's kind of a bit more like less grounded in reality than The Martian, I would say. But it was really good. And I liked, and I liked what I was saying about the science earlier. I liked also, it's not just kind of maths and physics. There's quite a bit of biology in it as well, which I really liked. So yeah, um, that's that one would highly recommend so we have a desolation called peace by arcady martin and this is the sequel to a memory called empire and i really love this one um i i definitely i liked a memory called empire but like this one i feel like i loved um so i feel like if you enjoyed a memory called empire but maybe didn't love it i would still recommend giving the sequel a try because i just feel like the sequel improves on all the like strengths of the first book and just like yeah it improves on the weaknesses as well and it's just such a good reading experience and I love following other characters in this one we're kind of following a bit of a first contact type storyline so it's like the on the fringes of war on like on the fringes of the galaxy and it's like the front of the war or whatever and they're just sort of coming into contact with these strange like alien ships um, and 
Um, yeah, so we're following this commander, Nine Hibiscus, and she's trying, kind of in charge of the fleet, and she's trying to like navigate what's going on. So that's really good. And we're also following the Heat, who we follow in the first book, who I really like as a character, and also Three Seagrass as well. And um, they're together, and they sort of end up somehow. <laughs> can't actually quite remember why they end up there, uh, with like Nine Hibiscus on this fleet. Um, I think maybe for like international like relations type thing um, and we also follow find out a bit more about Lysel Station which is where Mahi is from and um, which is very interesting and so the kind of polit political situation on Lysel which led to events in a memory called Empire like how it sort of came about um, which I think is really interesting. Uh, we're also following another character called A Antidote who's like this little kid who is slash was is heir uh, to the empire something along those lines but his storyline is really cute as well and interesting um, and through his eyes there's another character called 19 ads who i love she's like a total milf oh i love her so um yeah that's i really liked his storyline because of that obviously and also oh i have to mention his little nickname is cure and that's so cute because like his name is like antidote and then it's cure i just found that so cute anyway um, so yeah, I really like the story in this one and I feel like this is another one. I just like like sci-fi with themes of like What mugs? I don't know um, And there's some space kittens in this one, which is just so cute. Um Yeah, I just really loved it. I would highly recommend um, and there's a really steamy scene as well, which uh, I was here for so yeah, um would highly recommend. The final one we have is A Master of Gin by Pete Jelly Clark and this one is um one of the like I can't I don't know the name of the like series thing but it's like the full length novel of it's set in the same world as like the novella of Dead Gin in Cairo um, and following the same main character as well Fatma and she's really great I love her so much um, and this one is very much like a classic kind of whodunit type mystery like mini mystery but it's set in this like alternative Cairo in the kind of 1910s, I think it is. And um, so it's like a steampunky Cairo with also magic, like as part of the world. So like the jinn and um, other kind of like mythical beings like living around. And then basically in this one, at the start of the book, this whole brotherhood get murdered um, by this figure who's claiming to be the second coming of this mythological figure called al -Jazid. Um and so then Fatma has to try and investigate the like mystery that's going on with like why they've all been murdered and also this kind of imposter that's around um, and then yeah Fatma is also she gets this kind of apprentice type thing <coughs> um, called Hedia and but fam has always been like used to working alone and then hoodie is like this cute little wide-eyed apprentice and just really keen and then fat was like this grumpy mentor and just seeing them work together is so good and i really love the like themes of kind of how fat was like really the only woman in this like ministry of special investigations and how she feels guilty because she like wants to work alone but also she feels like she should be helping hoodie like um yeah like bringing her up and stuff so i think that's a really interesting conversation um but I really like that and then also Fatma's girlfriend City. I love her she's very like mysterious and like comes and goes like as she pleases but I really like finding out more about City in this book um and yeah I just really enjoyed it um and it's just it's very kind of like I don't think cheesy is the right word but like it's very sort of comforting in its kind of story style and structure um I just really liked it and I really like the mythology um that's involved and the characters are just great like the trio of women <laughs> um yeah so i really liked it um yeah anyway so that's this one so i hope you all enjoyed this video let me know in the comments what your favorite book of the year so far has been i'm not sure i could pick a favorite out of those top 10 these haven't been in any order by the way they're just random um yeah i don't know I can't think of favourite. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope you're all having a really great day and I'll see you next time.